my today's topic is uh, as you can see it is uh, oh sorry i have actually sorry 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 i have actually so my today's topic is uh, about exponential distribution and gamma density and uh, this exponential distribution and gamma density are the last topics of our module 2 of the syllabus exponential distribution is something different from normal distribution and it is also under the category of continuous probability distribution gamma density is also a kind of distribution and uh, there is kind of link between exponential and gamma density which will be disclosed at the end of the class with these topics i'm going to conclude my uh, the contents of uh, module 2 and uh, i shall be discussing only one problem today uh, because uh, that problem is based on exponential distribution the gamma density uh, gamma density's problem will not be discussed but gamma density's structure will be discussed problems related to gamma density will not come but the gamma density is important because it is somewhat related to exponential distribution so from problems perspective exponential distribution is very important now uh, let us start with uh, exponential distribution first of all okay actually today i has been i i, I have been uh, something has bitten my eye so i am actually facing some sort of difficulties uh, by looking i cannot see the i'm um, actually painting i'm feeling pain in my eyes actually so anyways let's start so the definition of the exponential distribution is that we consider a random variable capital x and this random variable is said to have exponential distribution with parameter theta greater than zero if its probability density function is of the following form now we have written we have uh, denoted the probability density function by the notation f of x comma theta you don't become confused by seeing this notation because it is not at all denoting function of two variables because theta is parameter and theta is constant so it is not variable so f of x comma theta is not a function of two variables f of x comma theta is simply fx okay but this uh, particular kind of notation has been used just to show you that theta is the parameter here theta is important to know the exponential distribution we must know the value of theta similar lee when we talk about binomial distribution you can write the binomial distributions uh, pmf as b of b stands for binomial b of x, x comma n comma p okay so that means that doesn't mean that a binomial distribution b is a function of three variables x is the variable n and p are the parameters so similarly in case of uh, poisson distribution you can write it as p of x comma lambda so x is the variable lambda is the parameter in in case of normal distribution you can write it as uh, uh, say for uh, you can write n of x comma mu comma sigma that doesn't mean that x is a norm uh, function of three variables n is function of only one variable either x or z mu and sigma are the parameters so this is a notation where i have mentioned that x is the variable f is defined on x the values of the random variable capital x and the parameter here is theta and the form of the pdf is theta into e to the power minus theta x so here you can see easily that if theta is known my pdf is known so exponential distribution can be easily solved the problems related to exponential distribution is easily solved and it's dependent on the knowledge of theta and here the variable is x exponential function is a constant function okay and x is non negative x is greater than or equal to 0 for negative x this doesn't have any meaning so the value of the 
PDF for negative X becomes zero. And uh, the average and variance of the exponential distribution can easily be calculated because you know that exponential this the if, if, if we talk about the continuous probability distribution its expectation is uh, calculated by integration over the entire range in which the function is defined and the integrand is the value multiplied by its cdf that is expectation and for variance we use the formula dx square minus ex whole square Okay, so by applying these formulae, you can easily calculate that expectation of the exponential random variable is 1 by theta and variance of the random variable which is exponential is 1 by theta square. Okay, so I have skipped this calculation. You can do it by yourself. You can also test your uh, ability to integrate the function Okay, and remember, you have to deal with uh, uh, the limits, one of which is infinity, because then we'll, whenever we'll be integrating this function, your lower limit will be zero and your upper limit will be infinity. So it's a kind of, uh, um, what should I say? It's kind of improper integral. Okay, so you just keep this in mind. Okay, improper integral can be deal, uh, solved or dealt by using the limiting value. So I don't think that limiting value will be applicable. Uh, actually, limiting values of the integration, integration under limits, this funda is applicable here. But still, if you don't, do not know it, you can easily find these results, 1 by theta and 1 by theta square. You will not be having any, any sort of difficulties in finding them. Here is the problem. The problem is, suppose that during rainy season, now, nowadays, uh, today, uh, it rained uh, in the morning, there was, there was rain. Okay, so the, we are going through the rainy season right now. So the problem is also about rainy season. So let's do the problem. Let's see what it says. Suppose that during rainy season on a tropical island, the length of the shower has an exponential distribution with parameter lambda equals to 2. The time being measured in minutes. What is the probability that shower will last more than three minutes? If a shower has already lasted for two minutes, what is the probability that it will last for at least one more minute? Now you see in this particular problem, the parameter notation has been used to be lambda. You don't, be, you don't get confused. Your lambda is similar to theta. They have just uh, changed the notation. Okay, in place of theta, they have used lambda. But the lambda or theta, whatever it may be, it has got a definite value, which is two. And the random variable considered here will be the length of the shower. Length of the shower means how long the shower lasts. So length of the shower is actually gives you the time uh, along, along that, uh, during that time, the sh there is shower, there is rain. Okay, that is the random variable here. And uh, it is mentioned that uh, this uh, length of the shower, this random variable with respect to rain is exponential. Okay. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that uh, this uh, distribution of length of shower of rain will always have to be exponential, but uh, it can be any other, it can have any other distribution. But uh, since it is mentioned that it is exponential, so we have to, uh, proceed accordingly and how do they know that this length of shower of corresponding to the rain is exponential is because is because uh, they have some data the meteorological department has some data with them and from previous experiences and their uh, the, the, the software they are using to uh, forecast the weather by that they are actually predicting or or you can say they are guessing that this rain, this length of shower of the rain is exponential. Okay. Our job is to find the probabilities that the shower, first probability is to find that the shower will last for more than three minutes. Okay. So let's solve the problem. Since uh, the exponential distribution has parameter lambda and it has got the value two, 
and uh, so we know the value of the parameter and we know that the distribution is exponential so immediately we can use the formula of the pdf of the exponential distribution and thus your formula takes the form f of x comma lambda is equal to when x is non negative it is twice into e to the power minus 2x and uh, when x is non neg uh, negative the pdf has got the value zero okay now once you get this we can easily calculate the probability that capital X takes value greater than three. The probability that X greater than three will be, we'll take the integration from three to infinity and the integrand will be this function twice e to the power minus twice X DX. And if I integrate, the value will come out as 2.47 into 10 to the power minus three. That is the probability. Okay. So we have got the first result. The second one is to find the probability that the rain will last for more than one minute, given that it has already lasted for two minutes. Okay, so the nature or the statement given in the problem tells us that it is talking about condition. So the second probability is not just probability, second probability is a conditional probability. Okay, so let us represent the condition given the problem in a mathematical way so we have do done a lot of problem lots of problems and conditional probability i did only one or two you have probably done a lot so probability of x greater than one that means the uh, rain will last for more than one minute given that so as bar has been uh, shown here x equals to 2 it has already lasted for two minutes so that is the condition and if i consider this to be the event a and this to be the event b so probability of a given b is probability of a intersection probability of b by probability of b now if i if you, you draw a real line and you mark the point one and two okay x greater than one means this region and x equal to two is only a single point if I take the intersection of these two, the result will be probability of x equal to 2. So in the intersection, there will lie only one point, that is x equal to 2. So in the numerator, we get x equal to 2, probability of x equal to 2. In the denominator, we are getting probability of x equal to 2. They will cancel each other and the result will come out as 1. And we know that when the event is certain, its probability is 1. So my event the event I'm talking about here, probability of x greater than 1 given that x equal to 2. That is not the event, that is the probability. The event is x greater than 1 given that x equal to 2. That is the event. This event is certain. And it is quite obvious and quite natural. Rain starts and then it gradually becomes, the, the, the intensity of the rain gradually becomes slower and slower and slower. Okay, it doesn't suddenly stop. Okay, that is, that is absurd. So, therefore, my, uh, the uh, result which I have obtained indicates that if the rain has already lasted for two minutes, it is certain that it is going to last for more than one minute or at least one minute. So, that's how with the help of this exponential distribution PDF, we have solved the two problems. Exponential distribution can also be written in this particular form. Okay, this form is nothing different from the previous one. Let's see the previous form once again. Okay, just to recapitulate. The previous form was theta into e to the power minus theta x for non-negative x's. Now here you see there is another form. 1 by theta into e to the power minus x by theta. We have taken the reciprocal of the theta. Okay, the parameter theta is constant here. So don't think that theta's reciprocal has been taken. Any constant can be any constant can be considered multiplied with the exponent. Okay, so th this constant is either something like theta or can be like 1 by theta. Okay, but the form, the structure of the PDF must remain same. If you are multiplying by theta, if you are multiplying the exponent by theta, then you have to multiply the variable in the power of the exponent by theta. If you are multiplying the exponent by 1 by theta, then the variable in the power of exponent has to be multiplied by 1 by theta. You have to keep this in mind. Don't write 
theta into e to the power minus x by theta. This is not exponential. Or you shouldn't write 1 by theta into e to the power minus theta x. That is not exponential. Either you write theta into e to the power minus x theta or you write 1 by theta into e to the power minus x by theta. Where uh, obviously here x is non-negative. Now you can ask me one question, sir, where is the equality sign? No, equality sign, you can put an equality sign over here, no problem. But remember that if x is non-negative, this exponent is zero. This particular PDF is zero. So this is true only for positive values of theta, positive values of x. And theta has also has to be positive. Theta has to be positive also. Okay. Theta cannot be negative. In this case, okay, if you write it at if you write it as one by theta, yeah, I can tell you one thing that uh, this expression is a specific type of expression, a special kind of expression. Okay, different. It's somewhat different from theta into e to the power minus x theta because I am taking the reciprocal. I am putting the condition because this special case is applicable to a, some sort of problems, problem of queuing theory or problem of waiting line theory. Okay, these are some problems of optimization techniques. It is beyond the scope of our syllabus. So there you can use this particular result. Otherwise, rest will remain same. Okay, only you can check the, if the PDF is of this form, what will be the form of e to the e of x, expectation of x in this case, and what will be the form of expectation of variance of x in this particular case. So you can do the calculation by yourself. Okay, so I have kept it for you. Next, we are going to discuss about the gamma exponential and chi-square distribution. Chi-square. This is chi. C-H-I. Chi. Chi-square, not chi-square. Chi-square distribution. Now, the heading is like this. That means that uh, maybe there are some sorts of some sort of relation between among these three. Hmm? So let's begin with gamma. Okay, and gradually, gradually we'll come to chi-square. But you can. If you have the syllabus in front of you, you can see that in module two, chi squared is not there. Okay, so just hold on, I'm telling you. Now, let's start with gamma density. The last topic of our uh, module two of the syllabus. If a random variable has PDF of the following form, what is the form of the PDF? Fx equals to, when x is non-negative, the value of the PDF is some constant k multiplied by x to the power alpha minus 1 e to the power minus x by beta minus x by beta and here it is x to the power alpha minus 1 look at this very carefully okay if the pdf is of this form and if alpha and beta are positive then this function is called gamma function this function or you can say the variable is said to have gamma distribution okay you have to keep it in mind you have to memorize the form of this function you have to memorize it okay so this is the form of gamma uh, gamma, uh, gamma distribution now this small k this constant is actually not always gamma this constant is actually a kind of thing kind of indicator which gives you the appropriate form of gamma distribution so if you vary the constants like k or alpha or beta, then the distribution will take shape, will change its shape, okay, and will take different forms accordingly. So we need to find the ex to get the exact form of the gamma random variable. We need to find this unknown parameter k. Okay, this is the general form you can see. So to find k, we'll apply the one of the properties of PDF. The property is called the area property. What does area property say? The area property says that the total area under the curve is equal to one. Okay. Or if we integrate the integrand from the in the in the defined range, then the total probability will be one. Okay. So here range is from zero to infinity. It is clear from the definition. We are going to integrate this. We are going to integrate. Okay, this particular function and we'll equate this to one. From there we can get the result of the, the value of k. 
So to do this, we are substituting, we are putting, we are introducing a new variable. So nothing but a method of substitution. We are actually putting y equals to x by beta. In place of x by beta, we are putting y. So I have shown a little bit of this in this here. If we substitute, substitute y in place of x by beta, then the dx will be beta into dy. And since it is, the, it is an integration of, it is a definite integral, we have to be careful about the limits too. So when x is zero, you see y is also zero. When x is uh, in infinity, y is also infinity. Okay, so integration zero to infinity, k into x to the power alpha minus one, e to the power minus x by beta dx becomes integration zero to infinity, integrand will be in terms of variable y. K's value is not known, k will remain same. In place of x, we will write beta y, whole thing to the power alpha minus one, and e to the power minus x by beta will be written as x by beta is y, so we'll write e to the power minus y, and dx is written as beta into dy, so you see. And you see here k is constant, so it will come outside the integration. Beta to the power alpha minus one is constant, will come outside the integration. Beta is constant, will come outside the integration. So beta to the power alpha minus one multiplied by beta will yield beta to the power alpha. So what we get inside the integration as integrand, we are getting y to the power alpha minus one, e to the power minus y dy. So let's see what is there. See, we are getting this. Okay. Now this function, this function, a very well-known function in the chapter of improper integral. I'll refer a book for this. Uh, you, you can, you can take any, you can take any book of real analysis. Let me show you a book. You can, if you don't know improper integral, you can refer this. I can refer this book. Okay. The name has a real, uh, a first course in real analysis. A first course in real analysis. Writer is Protter and More. Okay, from you can study this book. You can uh, download its PDF if it is available, and you can find there this improper integral, this function, which has been marked, which has been highlighted. This function is called gamma function. Okay, and this gamma function can be written by this notation. Gamma, this is called the this is a Greek letter, it is called gamma, capital gamma, just like our capital A, B, C, D. So, gamma of alpha, alpha is the parameter here. So, you see, only alpha is constant. Okay, everything depends upon the value of alpha. So, gamma alpha is the integration 0 to infinity y to the power alpha minus 1 e to the power minus y dy is defined as gamma alpha. The notation for this is gamma. It helps in calculating different improper integrals. And you see, there are various results uh, for this gamma function. One of the important result is this. So gamma alpha can be represented as alpha minus one in multiplied by gamma of alpha minus one. So if gamma, if you are talking about gamma two, then you can write it as two minus one into gamma one. So gamma two will be, you see, if I put alpha equal to two, then it will be gamma two. Gamma two will be two minus one into gamma one. The gamma one can be calculated as one, always. So gamma two will become just two, sorry, just one. Okay, since gamma one is one. So gamma two will be just one because, so you don't have to, and what do we mean by gamma two here? Here gamma two represents is integration zero to infinity y, y, into e to the power minus y dy. Okay, what is gamma three? Once gamma two can, once gamma two is calculated, gamma three can also be calculated. You see, gamma three will be three minus one into gamma two. The three minus one is what? Two. And what is gamma one? Gamma two. Gamma two is one. So gamma three will be two. So what is gamma three? Integration zero to infinity y to the power uh, two 
y square into e to the power minus y dy. You don't have to integrate at all. This is the strong point of this particular function. You don't have to integrate this improper integral. Your, your, what should I say? Your hard work has been minimized by, by the, with the help of this gamma function. So gamma function is a very powerful function. So this is a gamma function. So ultimately after integrating that, we have got K into beta to the power alpha into gamma alpha. Some other properties of gamma function have been shown here. Okay, say I, it, is, it has been shown that gamma one is one. Okay, and you see, if you find gamma one, gamma one is one, gamma two I have, uh, by the result is one, gamma three is uh, two, gamma four can be found as three into two, like this. So gamma alpha in general can be written as alpha minus one factorial, can easily be proved by mathematical induction. And since, since gamma alpha has got this particular result, alpha minus one factorial, therefore, in the beginning of this definition, we have put alpha greater than zero. Because if you ask me why alpha is greater than zero, it is because this. Because if you put negative alpha, negative number, if you put uh, say minus two, so gamma of minus two will be minus two minus one factorial, that is minus three factorial, and which is meaning, which is meaningless. Okay, so that's why alpha is always positive. Okay. And if gamma is, uh, if alpha is any fraction, okay, so if we choose a uh, half, so you, you can integrate and you can find that gamma half is root over five. And once you can find it, you can find other fractions too by using this particular formula. Gamma ha half has been obtained, gamma three by two can also be obtained. You put three by two over here. So if you put three by two, you will get three by two minus one gamma three gamma of three by two minus one. So it will be gamma three by two minus one means half into gamma half. So that will be half into root over pi. So that will be root over pi by two. So all the fractions can also be calculated using this gamma function. The gamma function is that powerful. So ultimately my objective here is not to discuss about gamma function. Our objective is to discuss probability. Okay, and therefore we are integrating this, we have got this result. And since we are calculating actually the total area, the total area is equal to one here. And now we can keep the un unknown on the left hand side as K and rest can be taken on the right hand side. So K's value can be obtained as one by beta to the power alpha into gamma alpha. This, this leads to the specific definition of the gamma distribution. So now gamma distribution can be defined in the following way. It is defined as a random variable capital X has a gamma distribution and it is referred to as a gamma random variable if and only if its probability density is given by this form. Initially we had K into X to the power alpha minus one e to the power minus X by beta. Now in place of K we have written in place of K, we have written one by beta to the power alpha, gamma alpha. So if you ask me whether you are supposed to memorize this, answer is yes. So you, are, you, are, you are supposed to memorize this particular thing. Questions are, questions are asked from this particular expression. So you have to memorize the form of this PDF. If we plot this function for different values of alpha and beta, so because the gamma function has got two parameters, alpha and beta. So for various uh, values of the parameter, we'll get different forms, different, different form of the function, different, different plottings are different plotting. Several plot, plottings have been shown over here for different values. Now you see, it's very interesting to note down that when alpha equals to half and beta equals to one, the function takes this form. If we plot the curve, the curve is like this. What is this curve? This curve is exponential curve. Okay, so the exponential function, exponential distribution is a special case of gamma distribution. When alpha equals to two and beta equals to half, then it takes this form. And when alpha equals to 11 and beta equals to one by five, it is this form, but that is not normal. You see the left hand side is a little bit slow, uh, smaller than the right hand side. 
right hand, right hand side a little bit extended. So both these dotted curves are not symmetric curves. They are asymmetric curves and they are biased towards the right hand side. This biasedness, this biasedness towards a particular side, be it right hand side or left hand side is called the skewness of the curve, skewness. And the skewness can be measured with the help of movement. I shall be discussing the skewness in terms of movements in the discussion of module four. This discussion is there. Skewness of the curves will be studied. But if the curve is normal, that means it is symmetric curve, then measure of skewness is zero. We will, sh we, we will calculate those, we'll show. We, we, I will show you by calculating examples that it happens. Okay, so these are called skewed curves. Okay, normal distribution probability curve is called non-skewed curve. Okay, and in the gamma function, if I put alpha equals to nu by two, if I put alpha equals to nu by two, nu is another, another quantity, a different quantity. A beta is taken to be two, then gamma distribution is takes this, this form. Okay, this is the form of gamma distribution. So we had beta to the power alpha. So in place of beta, we have written two. To the power alpha means in place of alpha is nu by two. So two to the power nu by two. Gamma of alpha means gamma of nu by two. X to the power alpha minus one, nu, min, nu by two minus one. And to the power minus X by beta. So to the power minus X by two. This is called your chi-square distribution. But you can ask me at this point, sir, why should I be so bothered about chi-square distribution? Chi-square distribution is not there in our cell. Uh, chi-square distribution is not there in module two. Why are you saying keep repeating chi-square distribution again and again? The answer is chi-square distribution is there in module six. Chi-square test of goodness of fit. Chi-square is there. Okay, so that's why I am showing you the PDF of this chi-square. I'm showing you that. And what is new? Here it is written that new, the meaning of new is the number of degrees of freedom. Please do not ask me what is the meaning of degree of freedom right now, because degree of freedom will be explained to you when we shall be doing module five, that is hypothesis testing. So all these things will are there and will come again and again in our discussion in due time. So you just have some patience. Okay, so new by two is a not new is just not just a number, a special kind of number. You just cannot put sir. Okay, new is five. Oh sir. Okay, new is six. Oh sir, no, new is uh, two. Let us take new to be minus one. No, don't do do this kind of thing. Okay, new is definitely is not new is. I can say that new is not negative, because of two reasons. It gives you number of something. Number of something cannot be negative. You cannot say uh, I have a minus two balls. Okay, so that's why new cannot be negative. Also mathematically, if new is negative, under the gamma function you will get minus half or minus negative. Gamma minus negative is undefined. So new is positive, but new can just not be any number, a special type of number, and that are called degrees of freedom. Will be explained in module five and module six. Okay, so chi-square distribution, important point is that chi-square distribution is a special kind of gamma distribution. And uh, lastly, before I conclude my today's session, I must define this also. A random variable capital X is called, is said to have Weibull distribution, Weibull, Weibull distribution, if and only if its probability density is given by this form. Same thing, mother variable is, the mother PDF is given as this. Here also the case value can be found out. Okay, you try, you can try by yourself for some specific value of k. Okay, so the alphas and betas have changed their position a little bit. Okay, and this form is called, this form is called Weibull distribution. Now you see, if I choose uh, beta equals to one, what do I get? We get k into x to the power zero, e to the power minus alpha x. And if I put k equal to alpha, then what do I get? We get fx equal to alpha into e to the power minus alpha x. So what do we find here? 
we find that variable distribution is a kind of distribution where for some specific value of beta if we, if we put beta equals to 1 then variable distribution takes the form of exponential distribution so exponential distribution can be considered as a special case of variable distribution exponential distribution is the special case of gamma distribution exponential distribution will be, is a special case of variable distribution so gamma density is important because various other densities like exponential distribution chi square distribution comes out of it okay that's why gamma distribution is studied separate examples for gamma distribution will not come in the examination but it's cached we can ask about you can ask questions about its its various characteristics so you have to be very you have to study gamma the entire note which i have shown today i'm going to upload the note in today's class and also the video so this much for today now before i conclude my today's class i must say that this is this is the fourth week running and two more days are remaining so after that i'm going to send your attendance okay and as well as your quiz test mark and I'm going to post it in Google Classroom so that you can all see, okay? And I'm going to start from tomorrow, the uh, module three, which is, of, which, is of, which is called bivariate distribution, okay? And one more thing is still remaining uh, from our module one syllabus, which is called multinomial, which I intentionally left behind without touching. So that will also be explained in module three, okay? And, uh, after I finish module two, module three, and you know, be, uh, you prepare yourself uh, for the CA one examination, continuous evaluation one examination, which will be based upon uh, module uh, two and module three. Okay, module one will not be there. Only module two and module three. Based upon this, I shall put questions. I shall. Uh, would set my questions for continuous evaluation. So you just uh, keep solving problems of uh, normal distribution, exponential distribution, and then uniform distribution. You just keep on studying percentile, whatever has been studied so far. Okay, and uh, module three is all should will also be there in the in the in the continuous evaluation continuous evaluation one syllabus. So best of luck and see you tomorrow with a new topic. Till then, Tata. And if you can ask, if you want to ask me any question, you can uh, do it now. Otherwise, you can leave the classroom. I have saved your chat. Your attendance has been given.